So here we go with the tail of the tape. Both men, 31 years of age, daily the height advantage. Their records very similar. And one big fact, they both carry incredible knockout power. Let's go to our MC, Mr. Mike Markham, for the official announcement of this big, big fight. From Victoria Warehouse in Manchester, England, we are live and worldwide. We are set for the Bama 16 main event, presented by Lonsdale. This bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Bama welterweight division. Introducing first, the man standing to my right hand, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet five inches tall and weighed in at 168 and one half pounds. He is a mixed martial artist. His professional record, 28 victories, opposite six defeats with 21 wins wins via knockout, fighting out of Ponce Salto out of Guaya, Brazil, Mourinho Ocha. <laughs> the opposition comes in the form of the man standing across the cage to my left and fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet nine inches tall. His official weight, 170 and one half pounds. He is a kickboxing specialist. His record, 34 victories, opposite 13 defeats with 25 wins coming via knockout. Welcome the world-class striker and international knockout artist, Paul Semtex. Your referee, Mark Woodard. Okay, gentlemen, you both understand the rules of this competition. Do you have any questions on those rules? If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Let's go back and do it. Frank, while they were making Daly's announcement, Hosha just looked to his corner, gave a little thumbs up and winked like he was in the park. Yes, this is this is an interesting matchup. One guy's super calm and you know Paul's super hype. So let's see which one which style comes out better. But of course, you, everyone knows my, my pick obviously is daily in this one. I think he's too fast, too strong, and this is a perfect matchup for him. That he's gonna be able to outstrike, out punch, find a way to, to put a guy down on the canvas and knock him out. Both men, as we said, 31, 46 knockouts between them into the twenties each. And he's got a wide back, Hosha. He's very stocky at the yeah. weight, isn't he? Very stocky. Five foot nine, he's kind of thick. He's got good head motion. You know, Paul's trying to hit him with that jab. He's going to slap, slip him to the outside. And as you said, and, right, and, and we've seen it right away from the start, you also said he won't be intimidated. And he's not at all. He, does, he doesn't. He has no fear of, of Paul's power. Beautiful slip, very calm, smiling. And as we said, six straight wins on the spin, all knockouts. You would be. Oh, nice body and head shots from Paul, Hosha. Probably not. Hosha's just fouling Paul. Paul's dictating the pace, dictating where the fight goes. You see him, he's not stalking him. He's not trying to trap him backwards. He's not trying to push him back towards the cage. He's just fouling. Wherever Paul goes, he's getting right back in the pocket. And Paul pushing out the jab occasionally, just testing, just teasing. Well, that's the difference with him now, isn't it? The patience and the time he'll take. And it's Paul Daly that looks to tie up. Wow, that is that is very strange. I don't know why that happened. Usually Paul doesn't do that until he feels something a little bit. Maybe he's trying to change his style a bit more. So he looks for the knee, looks for the jumping kick. Hosha, as I said, very compact, very confident. I love the economy of Hosha's work as well. He's very good at keeping his chin down, very good at, you know, gets out of the way and immediately counters. A great counter puncher so far, but, you know, Paul's blocked everything, you know, nothing's really hit him, so we got to see what happens when they guys start getting flush. Well, Paul Daly threw a knee there and a short elbow on the inside that didn't quite land, and again, another chopping elbow. So looking to keep it close and a bit dirty. Very smart, very smart. Take a guy's power away from him, don't let him stand inside. Um, 
Bailey blocked all those. Oh, uppercut there from Hosha. He's tidy, very tidy, as you'd expect from his record. Paul, a lot more patient than he used to be in the past. He's, you can see he's, he's starting to, to mature a little bit as a fighter. He's trying to... Oh, that knee time. just missed as well, Frank. You're right, he's trying to negate his power, negate his punching chances, work the elbows and the knees every time they clinch up. Hosha doesn't like the constant pressure, Paul. You see him taking a step back, trying to drop his hands, get a little break. The constant pressure, Paul's really giving him fits. Paul's doing a great job of keeping his hands up. Yes, he's looking for his own counters and comes forward in a straight line there. Nice, neat jab from Daly. And a different opening round to what I thought it would be, to be honest, Frank, but both men are obviously conscious of the knockout power of the other, and that's dictated the way this fight has opened. Yeah, both guys are trying to stay cautious, trying not to get caught by that big punch. Right now, Hosh is, you know, he's not really worried about, about the, the jab so much as he's worried about a hook or a straight right. Because let's get this straight, this really is one of those scenarios where one punch changes it, or a big jumping knee. Both of them miss, but look good for the crowd. You know, nothing's hit so far. There's a lot of strikes being thrown that aren't really landing on anything. And Hosha is, is playing a bit of a dangerous game here. He took that jab, as you said, he's not worried about it, to try and throw his own hooks. And that's, and that's what's happening with Paul. Paul's throwing that jab, and Hosha's throwing like he's expecting him to throw the right right after the jab. So he's coming over the top with his, with his uh, left-hand hook, and, uh, and it's missing on the mark because Paul's not throwing the right after the jab. Oh, turns his man, throws the low kick. Good timing there from Daly. So, under 30 seconds left now, and a very cagey opening round from both men that carry such raw power in their punches. More variety, though, I feel, from Daly. Yeah, he, he's been a lot, a lot better. You know, for this round, I'm going to give 10-9 to Daly in this one. He you know, pushed the pace. He made a host of follow him around. He dictated where the fight was going to be the entire time. And he's actually got you know, a couple more strikes in there than uh, than uh, Hosha did. Yes, if we look at it, the jab has worried Hosha, but it has been a point scorer. And people forget that, don't they? He might say, I'm not worried. He might say, it hasn't bothered me, but it has scored. Right, and you know, it's... it's it's nice to see that there's finally a guy that's fighting tonight with a lot of head motion. He's getting, you know, he's missing, the, the jabs are missing entirely. He's slipping his head to the outside. He's been in a great position, but Paul just started catching him. You know, he led with that, he led with that, that uppercut. The reason why the uppercut caught him is because Paul led with an elbow. He wasn't leading with a jab. And it's when they closed the gap and got into the clinch. The knee just landed on the elbow there. Daly's very clever inside, isn't he, with the short knees and the elbows, working him hard so he can't get the range from those big punches. He's very smart. He's very smart at what he does. It makes a lot of sense in his new quick placement for his hand. So, you know, I said in the opener, I'd like to see him do a lot more MMA, but it looks like the K-1 training, you know, the, the, the four fights he did for K-1 training this year have, have really paid off in getting his head motion down and getting his hand placement much better because he really didn't have a jab before that was land as much as this one has. And I bet you he's going to even increase the pace with the jab this round, too. So for me, if it stays this way, Frank, do you think there comes a time when Hosha takes it to ground? He's going to have to, because he can't outstrike Paul Daly. You have to get him down to the ground. There's no way you can beat him. He's not, he's not any good from his back, because he never has to be there, because everyone gets knocked out before they get there. And you called it right. Daly's already stepped up the pace in the opening 10 seconds here. Thrown more punches, closed that gap, walks his man down. Now, a lot of people don't know oh, that's the, you know, Paul just got through the feeling out round. Oh, nice, nice exchange there by uh, Hosha. There, um, uh, Paul doesn't have a feeling out period. What he's doing is he's figuring out your timing and your technique and your reaction to the different things that he does so he can counter your reactions. Now, that looks good from Hocha, but all of it's been tucked up and tight and taken on the arms and gloves from Daly. Paul's got his you know, hands nice and tight, his elbows are in, his chin is down. Even if it hits him, it's going to be a glancing off his shoulder. And that's what I like to see. Now, working the legs low, you can see the, the swelling on the, the left thigh of Hocha, taking his mobility from him. And the knee now, as soon as Daly clinches up. And Hosha takes another knee as well. And you get the feeling he doesn't like it this close. No, he, he's a power puncher. He wants to be on the outside. He wants to be in a space where he can get full swing, full shoulder rotation. He wants to throw everything he has in every single punch. And that's why he gets so many knockouts. 
where Daly beat you apart and kind of, ooh, nice, that left hand snuck in there. Yeah, that got through somehow, sure. I even like how Paul's not conceding the cage. He's not, I don't, he's not going to drive me back to the cage anymore. I'm going to spin off immediately as soon as you get here. And that, you know, favors the judges. If you keep a guy against the cage, he's caught wow. better on the inside there, Frank. Jeez. This is where he's explosive on the inside. Even from nuzzling the forehead into the cheek of Hosha before he starts his other work. Hosha hasn't thrown any kicks at all. He's very dedicated to getting, slipping that jab, slipping that hook, and punching as hard as he can every single time. I think you said it earlier, Frank. He's used, obviously, when you've got that many knockouts on your, on your record, you're used to doing it a certain way, and it works. And, and that's what he's trying here. He, said he throws everything into every punch. He likes that range. This is where Daly gets the better of him. You saw that beautiful combination. He's working his man on the inside. Every time that Paul goes to the plum, Hosa comes over the top with a, with a strong left and backs and that's how he clears the plum is by punching Paul in the face. I'm wondering if Paul's going to use the plum a little bit more to try to get those knees in, but it's a dangerous situation because his hands are away from being able to block his face. Yeah, he's got fast hands, Hosha. He, he's a real danger in there, obviously, and that one's straight just a bit low, but he's opening up now, and Daly opens up with the kick and the knee in response. Well, two minutes left in the second round, and it's really opening up now. The one thing I will say about Hosha, which if you're looking for faults, is he does walk forward. He's tailor-made to kick those legs. Yeah. He comes forward at one pace, ready to throw his hands. I would punish those legs even more, Frank. He's like the old school Rampage Jackson, where he just keeps coming forward, coming forward. And then he got mad when guys start kicking his legs out from underneath him. But that's the bit easiest way to beat a guy like that is going to chase you. Paul's getting smarter now. His punch pattern's coming up, his punch power's coming up. I don't know if he sees something inside that we can't see here from K side because he, he's really he's looking for he's hunting now. He's not he's not just trying to find rhythm and find timing. Now he's finally starting to hunt with a minute 30 left in the second round. Oh beautiful body shot, that lift to the body. This is all over. This is all over. What punch for the body friend. said rightly, he was stepping it up, he was stepping it up. The left was thrown with real venom to the midsection. And then it was all over. You knew the moment he hit the floor, as yeah. you said quite correctly, there's no way he's going to let someone off the hook. No, no, he, he, started, he started hunting, he started seeing, he saw something on the inside. He knew that he had some kind of opening, and he jumped right to it, and that was flush. Like there, he hit that so well, he dipped it like he was going to come up with a, with a tight left hook, and he pops in, he pops in, he hits him with a freaking, you know, with a, uh, uh, Excuse me, he dips it, he's hit him with the right, with the right overhand. He dips down, comes back and hits him with the left of the body, right on the liver. You know, it, it is an amazing place to go if you hit the liver correctly. You know, like Boss Rudin has taught all of us for years that hit a guy correctly in the liver, that ends the fight very, very fast. And it was done with composure tonight. And clever thinking, and inside boxing. So much patience, so much more patience than we've seen Paul Daly had in a long time. Very patient. What a finish by Paul Daly. Let's go to our MC, Mike Markham, for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the bout ends at 3 minutes, 40 seconds of the second round. Your winner by knockout, Paul Simtex Daly. All right, Paul, um, I mean, what can you say? I mean, it was going to come either on the chin or in the body, and you just chose to do the liver tonight. Was that what you've been working on lately, or is that just something that happened in the middle of it? I mean, was it part of the game plan, or was it something that's popped up in the middle of it? Uh, it was, firstly, it was very tough. So, uh, you know, I hit him with three solid knees to the chin in the first round. He took him, and he just sort of ran away. So I was having some success in the clinch, working out of the clinch, uh, which what, is what led to the body shot. He ran away from the clinch and ran straight onto my left to the body. But yeah, you know, me and my coaches, Coach Dave, uh, Rupert Smiley, Sonny Delacchia, the future of the Bamaweight British welterweight division, Big Walter G, the number one guy uh, after me in the UK, in my opinion, 14 and 0, helps me out regardless, is a boss. So uh, yeah, I'm working with all these guys and uh, you know, you're seeing the results. You have a, a newfound patience. And I talked about the top of the, top of the international feed that 
you know, I don't like seeing you fight in K1 so much because I want to see you fight MMA more because once you figure out how to stay on your feet, you're going to knock everybody out. You'll be a champ in any organization because you punch so hard and you're so good at it. It seemed like that time in K1 kind of helped out your patience and your placement of your hands. Have you noticed a personal difference in how you strike and how you hit people now? Yeah, definitely. I'm a bit more confident with punches coming at me from the, the time I've spent doing kickboxing. He was throwing some big, heavy shots. And I think I maybe would have been a little bit more uncomfortable had I not had the recent uh, success in uh, high-level kickboxing. So I think it's definitely uh, helped me in my MMA game. Take a look at the replay here. Uh, uh, sorry, I got right there at the end, but you hit him right in the liver. When you stepped in, were you stepping in to hit him with a liver shot from the very beginning? Or it looked like you were stepping in to fake an overhand right to go to the liver. Was that the game plan, or did I miss something else that was going on? It, was, it just happened out of instinct. I seen him running towards the left, and his head was a little too far away to land the left hook to the head, so I just placed it to the body, and it worked out perfectly. Are we done with K1 now? You're going to sp you know, spend a lot of time now just paying attention only to MMA? Or do you still have a couple more K1 fights you have to get done with first? Yeah, I have a contract with uh, K1, the K1 Max organization. I'll be fighting there this year in Thailand, but my focus will be now uh, mainly MMA with Bama and again over in the USA with Bellator now that I've got my visa back. So I'll be over there in the USA doing my thing as well. You know, congratulations on getting your visa back and getting through all that issue. So now it's great to have you back over in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the toughest strikers you'll find in any weight class, and he's right here from England, Paul Simtex Daly.